No, it's a very common lymphoma in uh, children. It's regarded as the most common lymphoma in children. In uh, it can be uh, said to be the most common uh, lymphoma in United States and almost accounting for as much as 30% of uh, pediatric uh, neoplastic diseases. It is uh, found in young adults also sometimes. And uh, it is a very high grade lymphoma. That is uh, the uh, most important thing. So it has to be diagnosed rapidly and uh, chemotherapy has to be instituted very uh, rapidly at early stages to confer good prognosis. That is very important. It spreads very fast. It is very high grade lymphoma. And uh, it is having a very strong association with Epstein-Barr virus. EBV genome has been identified in uh, many of the cases. So let's go towards uh, the etiopathogenesis. So etiopathogenesis uh, lies in translocation 814. So please remember this. This is often there in the vignette. 814 translocation is quite common in Burkitt's lymphoma. And uh, the translocation leads to overexpression of CMIC gene. So CMIC is originally present in chromosome 8 and chromosome 14 bears immunoglobulin heavy change gene. So the uh, translocation or exchange of the genetic material leads to unregulated overexpression of CMIC. So this oncogene, uh, CMIC oncogene leads to activation and uncontrolled division and proliferation of B cells. That is very important point in the pathogenesis of Burkitt lymphoma. And also it has been studied that increased expression of transcription factor TCF3. So please remember this TCF3. This has been found uh, in a uh, majority of the cases of Burkitt's lymphoma. And this TCF3 is believed to be a regulator of gene expression in germinal center B cell. So this TCF3 is also believed uh, to be a part of this translocation. The increased expression also arises out of this translocation. And this causes increased uh, proliferation of germinal center B cell. So clinically, three different forms are identified. The African endemic uh, uh, Burkitt lymphoma, in which the involvement of mandible or maxilla, the jaw bones, are very characteristic. Apart from that, uh, there is high predilection for involvement of visceral organs like kidney, adrenals, and ovary may be commonly involved. And Epstein-Barr virus is, uh, association is seen in almost all the patients. That is very key factor in this endemic Burkitt lymphoma. Sporadic, non-endemic, uh, sporadic or non-endemic Burkitt lymphoma is quite common in the United States. And this is uh, seen involving the GI tract, paraiotic uh, nodes, and it uh, most commonly presents as an ileocecal mass. So I, it is one of the important ileocecal mass, the important differential in pediatric age group is Burkitt's lymphoma. And Epstein-Barr virus relationship is seen in only 15 to 20% of cases. So like uh, the F African Burkitt lymphoma here, it is not seen in all the cases, but only in one fifth of the cases, Epstein-Barr virus relationship is being exhibited. Now coming to HIV associated Burkitt lymphoma, it is seen in HIV infected patients uh, and uh, Epstein-Barr virus genome has been identified in 25% of cases, that is around one fourth of the cases only. So in an African region where there is endemicity, the HIV infection is also endemic. So there may be a cross uh, linkage between, uh, uh, between the African Burkitt lymphoma and HIV associated, but the two have uh, different clinical course. And this HIV-1 associated Burkitt lymphoma is exclusively seen in HIV infected patients. And EBV genome is not uh, seen in all the cases as seen in African Burkitt lymphoma. And also it follows a very aggressive uh, outcourse and having a very poor prognosis in case of HIV-associated Burkitt's lymphoma. So we can see the jawbone uh, being commonly involved uh, in African Burkitt lymphoma, endemic Burkitt lymphoma, and sporadic lymphomas commonly uh, present as ileocecal mass can present as uh, ileocecal, it can present as small intestinal obstructions, uh, intersusception, so obstruction is a very common feature of small bowel uh, lymphoma. Coming to the certain morphological features that help in clinching the diagnosis of Burkitt lymphoma. So the lymph nodes uh, where the Burkitt lymphoma involves 
that exhibit a characteristic morphological feature that is known as starry sky appearance. So please don't forget the starry sky appearance. This uh, itself is a very important catch of bucket lymphoma. So here what happens is that neoplastic lymphocytes are quite monomorphic, quite uh, darker looking, quite uh, a bluish looking or uh, darker looking. So, so it uh, exhibits a dark of night and a tangible and inter intermittent uh, large lighter staining macrophages, which are called as tangible body, body macrophages or the macrophages ingesting the foreign body substances uh, that is known as tangible body macrophages. So they exhibit as stars. So stars in the dark of night that is called as starry sky appearance. And the cells are monomorphic, but they exhibit a very high mitotic index and large number of cells having apoptotic uh, change, apoptotic transformation are seen. So the macrophages or the tangible body macro, uh, macrophages, they engulf the nuclear remnants of this dying apoptotic cells. Now, uh, if the bone marrow is involved, the bone marrow involvement uh, can lead to uh, the leukemic transformation and the neoplastic cells can circulate in the peripheral blood. So the leukemic cells of the bone marrow, they exhibit uh, clumped chromatin, multiple uh, nucleoli, and bluish cytoplasm, dark blue uh, cytoplasm, and that contains abundant cytoplasmic vacuoles. So this is akin, and this is morphologically similar to ALL L3 type. ALL L3 type, or acute lymphoblastic leukemia L3 type, which is seen in children, is believed to be uh, similar to that of Burkitt lymphoma leukemic form. Coming to the immunophenotype, here the mature B phenotypes, cell phenotypes are expressed in the neoplastic cells. So IgM, CD19, 20, CD10 are very well expressed in the B cells or neoplastic cells. So that helps in clinching the diagnosis. Germinal central proliferation marker, that is BCL6, is also expressed. So this is again an important catch. But uh, it is important to remember that the germinal center marker BCL2, which is seen in many of the lymphomas, BCL2 is uniformly absent in the neoplastic cells of uh, absent in the neoplastic cells of Burkitt lymphoma. That has to be remembered. So BCL6 positive, BCL6 negative, and all the mature B cells marker are positive. That is CD1920 and CD10 all are positive. So here comes, you can see the uniform appearing neoplastic cells. Here you can see the uniform looking neoplastic cells surround uh, appearance. And uh, uh, you can see very high mitotic index. And uh, this amidst this uh, sheets of neoplastic uh, lymphocytes, and there are certain large macrophages containing uh, this apoptotic uh, cells. And this is the nucleus of uh, these macrophages. So these are known as tangible body macrophages. So dark looking neoplastic cells and lighter looking macrophages, they impart a tangible body, uh, or they impart a starry sky appearance that is characteristic of Burkitt lymphoma involved in folks. So coming to the prognosis and the treatment, Burkitt's lymphoma is a very aggressive treatment and uh, it spreads uh, rapidly. It, uh, it commonly transforms into leukemia and spreads to other organs, can spread to CNS as well. And uh, it, if it is uh, diagnosed early and uh, if it is, and uh, the chemotherapy is uh, instituted at the early stage, then it is having a very good prognosis. And many of the children and young adults can be cured at, if they are treated at the early stage with the aggressive chemotherapy, the Burkitt's lymphoma is having a good prognosis then. But otherwise it is having a very bad outcourse if treated in the later uh, stages. Now let's uh, sum, uh, summarize everything and end up for uh, the presentation with an important case discussion. So a 13 year old boy is brought to his physician uh, with a complaint of increasing abdominal distension and pain that has lasted seven days. Physical examination released uh, decreased bowel uh, sounds, tympani and lower abdominal tenderness is there. CT scan shows a six centimeter mass involving the distal ileum. A biopsy of the mass is taken under radiological guidance and histological sample shows sheets of intermediate sized lymphoid cells with non-convoluted nucleus and coarse chromatin and there are many macrophages. So you can see there is a bowel obstruction, decreased bowel sound, tympani and lower abdominal tenderness is there. It is involving the ileum 
and and it, uh, the biopsy is showing uh, sheets of uh, lymphoid cells and there are many macrophages uh, in between so uh, all these findings are in keeping with the diagnosis of burkitt lymphoma pediatric age group ileal uh, involvement large mass monomorphic uh, cells large sheets of cells and interspersed macrophages so all these are in the favor of burkitt lymphoma so the diagnosis conferred is burkitt lymphoma so uh, i hope to uh, uh, you learned uh, important things how to answer different questions regarding burkitt lymphoma and uh, it help in clarifying your concepts and to differentially diagnose it from other entities so thank you for your patient hearing and uh, i will be back uh, with another video very soon and please don't uh, forget to subscribe uh, the channel and like and comment on the video thank you all